My papa used to sing me that song. He said it's about our ancestors, who were brave sailors, unafraid of raging seas. The ocean is also my papa's playground. He's a scuba diving instructor. After work, he shows me pictures and videos of beautiful fishes and corals. I love going to the beach while waiting for my papa to finish working, but as time passes by, it's getting more uncomfortable to play there because it's getting dirtier. Kondisi laut Indonesia kini berada dalam situasi kurang beruntung. Di laut kita nanti lebih banyak plastik. Penyebaran sampah plastik di laut tak semakin mengkhawatirkan. So that was a brief video for Reformers, which is a non-profit marine conservation organization that was founded by Rafael and Ryan Ango. Yes, its founding is not without reason and that's why this morning we have Rafael and Ryan right here in the studio to talk more about their organization and programs to revitalize the health of marine ecosystems. Good morning, Rafael and Hi, Ryan. Good, morning. Oh, good, good morning. to see you here in the studio. You. Indeed. Uh, glad to have you both here. So, a uh, quick brief background. You guys are brothers. Yes. Uh, Rafael and Ryan, you're four years apart. You're 16 and 12. Yes. Wow. Um, you guys are relatively young. Uh, before we talk about um, Reformers, your organization, I want to ask how you guys got motivated at such a young age to participate and contribute to marine conservation. So before moving to Jakarta, uh, my brother and I live in, lived in Manado for okay. eight years, which for me is basically almost my entire life. And if there's something about Manado that I will always carry with me for the rest of my life, it's definitely the ocean. And my brother and I have had some really cool experiences with it while growing up, like going on fishing trips with my dad, going scuba diving, um, going on uh, jet skis and speedboats. And when we moved to Jakarta for school, and we tried to do these activities he uh, here in Jakarta, so we realized that like <laughs> living in Manado gave us the luxury of having really, really easy access to the ocean uh, compared to in Jakarta. So we decided to not let it go to waste and uh, take advantage of this by starting Reformers. And through Reformers, uh, we not only aim to maintain, but to improve the oceans of Manado and to prevent it uh, from degrading. Okay, um, well said, by the way. Have you ever been to Manado? Never. I have. Once. A lot of people wow. think I'm Manado niece for some reason. When they hear my name, Papa Lelia, they see my face, they think, oh, you're from Manado. But beautiful out there. He's absolutely right. Ryan's right. Uh, it's all water, and it's all very clear for the parts, the, the time that I went. It was almost over 10 years ago. And great seafood, of course. Wow. So amazing. A lot, so much to do out there. I should go there then. Yeah, yeah. But can you tell us more about the organizations that you guys founded? Yeah, so Reformers is a marine conservation NGO based in Manado, North Sulawesi, Indonesia. And we primarily focus on coral transplantation. So we have a site... Um, Did you explain a little bit what that... Yeah, coral okay. Transplantation. So, um, uh, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with like transplantation with plants yes. on land. So what we're doing is just an underwater version of that. Uh, okay. It's really similar. So it's a technique to basically multiply and increase um, coral populations and communities. Because corals are very important to the ecosystem of yes. the underwater yeah. life, right? Exactly. Not only do they provide habitats for all marine life, but mm. they produce 50% of our oxygen. Um, right. um, they help absorb carbon dioxide emissions as okay. well. And I mean, like coastal communities around the world really depend on, you know, coral reefs because it's sort of the foundation for all marine ecosystems. Right. right. So yeah, it's really important. Okay. Yeah. And so in our site, um, we have 1,760 corals. Mm. And these are a mix between six dif different coral species. And uh, we chose these six species because they're really resilient to climate conditions. We all know the current climate crisis that's going on right now. Yes. I mean, like rising ocean temperatures, global warming, etc. right? So with these resilient coral um, species, we not only build, you know, really, really strong coral communities, but the underwater ecosystems that we're building is, you know, really, really um, resilient. Okay, and yeah. More sustainable, I guess, as exactly, well, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, uh, and you guys are managing this, by the way. Now you're based in Jakarta. Yes. But you're still, like, you have your team out there. How does that usually work? Yeah, okay, so, um, of course, we already have the corals transplanted there, but 
Um, we have a team in uh, Manado that does monitoring sessions every month. Oh, okay. So these monitoring sessions are necessary to ensure that everything is okay, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure our crows are growing healthily. Okay. And Brian, can you talk about like what else do we do? What kind of data we collect during our monitoring sessions? Uh, so basically every month we send divers uh, down to our site to collect data and ensure the growth of our corals. And we collect uh, data about things like the growth of our corals in size and how many species have uh, built homes in our site. Okay. And we also clean the corals of turf algae or anything that may harm them. Um, and if we find trash near our site, we also pick it up and clean it. Yeah, yeah, of course. So let's. Uh, when was this founded, by the way? Reformers. It's December 2021, so 2021. one wow, and a half right, years. Right in the midst of the pandemic, by yes. the way. So um, obviously you do collect data on a month-to-month -month basis and you're able to track the effects and the impact. And I believe we have uh, compiled some of them so we can maybe go through them right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. From coral plantation, uh, uh, transplantation rather, these are some of the impacts that it has so far. Perhaps you can explain some of them as well. Yeah, some yeah. of the impacts from... Okay, yeah, so... Um, I mean, first of all, um, 96 plus new species. So each month we keep track of how many new biodiversity lives on our site. Okay. And biodiversity is like a really important metric of impact because when you, when animals come and begin to live in your site, that really shows that your ecosystem is working, right? Okay. Because now your habitat is, you can live in your habitat, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a really important metric that we keep track of. These are new months. species that were not there in that area before, yeah. correct? Yes, wow. yeah, and yeah. because um, in this area, it's mostly just like sand, like, uh, I see. like blank ocean floor, mm. but yeah, so this is a new home for them. And okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's talk about the wild corals. What are the, what are wild corals? Okay, so <clears throat> um, it's called, uh, we, we say that we save 1,760 wild corals because we take our fragments from a coral nursery, okay, and that's called the Coral Stock Center. Right. And that was developed by the Indonesian Ministry of Maritime and Fisheries, oh, wow. which is actually one of our partners. Okay. And so we take these fragments from a nursery because first of all, it's healthier, uh, much more healthier than taking from a, like a real An wild existing coral. existing one, right. Exactly, and okay. it's actually legal because taking it from a wild coral is illegal. So oh. a, lot of, a lot of people, um, I would say when they try to do some initiative like coral transplantation, they misunderstand the correct way to do it and they mm -hmm. take fragments directly from a wild coral which is not only unhealthy but it's also illegal. And, and you're going to be damaging that existing coral. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. So you're not doing environmental conservation, right. you're doing environmental degradation. Yeah. Okay. And about yeah. the household income, how Can you does that work? talk about work? that more, right? The household income. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll help you out. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So, um, through our work, it's not only you know environmental mm -hmm. impacts, but we're also really uplifting coastal communities in Manado. Oh, the local community. Exactly. Right. Okay. Um, you can actually keep yeah. track of if you compare the data because the Indonesian Maritime uh, Ministry of Maritime and Fisheries like releases like data of coastal communities, fishermen, etc. Mm -hmm. If you sort of compare the data before we start doing our work and after, there's a significant increase in um, uh, income. Okay. This would be, for example, like uh, a fisherman now would have more bountiful more fish, uh, yes. selections yeah. to yeah. fish from. Exactly. Okay. And for example, scuba diving instructors now, because our site oh, is right. a tourism place, yes. right? And so they are they're, they're, um, attracting more guests and stuff. Oh, more people sense. are coming because down it's here. it's more beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. Something yeah. to see. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sea floor. Okay, that's, yeah. that's an interesting perspective that we sometimes don't see. Yes. Yes, exactly. and so, how about the new coral recruitment? Yeah, so um, I don't know if you can see there in the picture, but um, there are these little circles, the substrates. That's what our corals grow on. Okay, made yes. Of cement. Uh -huh. And if you see closely, um, there are little, like, small corals that are growing out of there. And these corals are potentially, they can become new fragments for more coral transplantation mm. projects. Uh, so that's why we okay. call it coral recruitment. It's because okay. the corals that we plant are, you know, multiplying in, in, in population. Okay, so those weren't the ones that you weren't expecting. They're actually... Exactly. Were, okay. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Yes. Yes. And obviously the new saplings are just the new, like the new yes. growth. Of yes, them. yes. So this is some amazing uh, impact that you guys have done so far. And obviously we can track this yeah. data. Yeah, thank and you. And this is from one spot only, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, our, our, we, we right now just have Reformers Reef, which takes up around 280 meters square of ocean space under the water. Yeah. So do you plan to expand that? And what are your 
plans in the future for reformers? Yeah, um, so um, with, we have 280 meters square taken, but um, we actually have the license to use 5,000 meters square. Okay. And so before we consider, you know, expanding into other areas, we want to, you know, really maximize what we have in Manado, yeah. right? right? But I would say like, um, an obstacle for us and other other like initiatives, um, local initiatives in Manado, um, like we have a financial sort of you know barrier, like of a course. financial obstacle, yeah. right? You have a budget to work yes. with. Yes, mm -hmm. and so um, to ideally we would want to plant a thousand corals each year, mm -hmm. but we don't we don't want to do that because. When we plant more corals, the cost each month for monitoring also increases. Right, because then you have to track everything yes. more you have. So we want to sustain financially as okay. well. So I think this is also an invitation for everyone watching out there, you know, yeah. please donate to our cause. Yeah. Um, if you're working in a private company and you're part of the board of directors and yeah. you're looking to sponsor an initiative as a form of CSR, you know, don't hesitate to contact us. Okay. I mean, I'll share something with you a little bit. Just last week, actually, Mercedes-Benz Indonesia sponsored our initiative. Yeah, and they sponsored, uh, they adopted 1,280 of our corals. Oh, amazing. Yeah. All right. So it's an ownership program as well. Yes. So now they yes. have a, a And so sense basically, of those corals are now their responsibility ah. to be taken. And cost wise, makes it easier for you. Exactly. It really helps us, right? Right. Yeah. So and yeah, the CFO actually dived with, with our team. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> and he saw what we were working on. You know, he saw our beautiful fishes, our mm -hmm. beautiful corals. And yeah. So if you want to visit our site, we can definitely do that. We're more than happy to arrange. There you go, Alan. Yeah. Perhaps for your first trip to Manado. Yeah, <laughs> so, to see uh, the coral really I want to <laughs> uh, follow that up. Actually, you did mention like you you do work alongside the Ministry of Fisheries, Maritime and Fisheries as well. So, what other part do you have partnerships with other stakeholders apart from uh, Mercedes Benz recently and local governments in the area? And what is the what is the working relationship like with the local government? Uh, so, Reformers collaborates a lot with the local coastal communities, as okay. my brother mentioned before, yes. uh, like the diving instructors, okay. uh, the underwater photographers, uh, boatmen, uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, when it comes to local coastal communities, Reformers works a lot with them. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of pushback from the local communities. Obviously, this is a benefit for them as well. Yes. Right? Yes. So you yes. don't encounter. So it it's it's a win-win situation. No yeah. resistance from them, right? No. no yeah. No. They're also really happy to you know volunteer uh, in our monitoring sessions. So, yeah. yeah. It's a mutual beneficial partnership. So you speak at international event as well, right? What yes. are the outcomes that you bring back to Indonesia and yeah. for the reformers? Yeah. I mean, I think. Um, when we talk about marine conservation in, in Indonesia, most people think about Bali, mm, right? Yes. But um, I mean, through the events that I've spoken in, I mean, we've really, you know, brought Manado to the spotlight. I mean, Manado, I think, as of right now, is still like a hidden gem. Not many people know about it, but, you know, the potential for growth in marine conservation, the blue economy, et cetera, is really, really big. And so I'm happy that I can really bring attention um, to Manado and really promote it at an international stage. Yeah, and by the way, uh, I went over 10 years ago. The one challenge for me was flights were expensive. And if you can increase tourism and you can increase uh, the demand of people wanting to go there, that will automatically bring more routes there and that will automatically yes. bring yeah. uh, costs yeah. down as exactly. well to travel yes. there. So speaking of travel, uh, one of the uh, events that you uh, attended was UN World Ocean Day that took place in New York only uh, this month, right? Earlier in June. Yes. Tell us what are the biggest takeaways that you yeah. guys got from that experience? Yeah. I mean, first of all, it was a really great experience being able to attend that conference as a high school student. It was, it was <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it was around a three to four hour conference and there were like very wonderful speeches from really important figures in the marine world. Yeah. So like Dr. Sylvia Earle, um, the founder and CEO of Coral Gardeners, etc. And I think the main message or a common theme through all of these talks was that we need to put the ocean first when um, uh, making decisions that impact our environment because you know, the ocean is our life support system. Mm -hmm. Like 50% of the oxygen we breathe is produced from the ocean. 30% of carbon dioxide emissions is absorbed by the ocean. Yeah, yeah, and there are millions of communities around the world who depend on our ocean for their livelihood, right? For yeah. food, income, etc. And so, we need to prioritize um, ocean conservation. And I think this circles back to what we were saying at first, uh, both from you guys, is that 
we live in a capital city where we're not close to the ocean yeah. and sometimes it's out of yeah. sight out of mind you know if something's not close to us we don't think about it but everything we do here in the big city does have an impact on oceans yes and i think it will be more challenging to take care of the ocean or the yeah in, in jakarta right we have several private of yes. mm -hmm. and some coastal area but it's not nearly as much as other yes. areas yeah yeah, yeah yes so what are the challenges to bring uh, together all stakeholders to support this cause other than the financial uh, part or challenges? Yeah. Um, I would say for uh, Manado, there are still a lot of big private companies that do beach reclamation. Uh -huh. So it's like development over, you know, coral reefs and right. the beach. Yeah, but um, on the other hand, mm, there's... A sort of there's a shift uh, that's starting to come I, um, I agree there I won't really mention names <laughs> or yes. name drop anyone but for example one of the um, you know the founders of you know this big private company that does beach reclamation mm. um, she realizes that you know okay we need to do something about this environmental problem right so she has her own um, her own initiative um, she's really big in the marine conservation world. She has her own, you know, like um, trash cleanup initiative, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And so I think um, despite, you know, all these uh, reclamations that destroy our ocean, if we start to act now and really make a change, you know, either by creating something new or, you know, supporting an initiative like us, mm -hmm. then we, re we really have a chance in, you know, saving our planet and our oceans. So, Very much agree with yeah. you uh, both on that point. So. What have you guys got up the pipeline, uh, in, at least in the immediate or near future, for reformers? Um, yeah, um, I think right now um, we want to, well, first of all, uh, thank you Mercedes-Benz for the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So with that um, um, donation, I think we have a lot more like room or, or leverage, I to guess, grow, to grow. I guess, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Um, I think we're not really... Uh, like I said before, the ideal um, expansion we have is to really uh, transplant a thousand corals oh, per wow. year. Right? Wow! Yeah. And yeah, mm -hmm. so we want to really maximize the 5,000 meters square we have in Manado. Mm -hmm. And after that, we have to research first which areas we can expand to because not all areas are suitable for coral transplantation. Okay. Right? It relies heavily on water quality. Like if you do coral transplantation in Jakarta, yeah, it'll just not die. Yeah. work. You right. cannot do it here. Yes, yeah. the water is just too. Too oh, bad, yeah. Too polluted. Okay. Exactly. Well, the good thing is you guys are working with ongoing data to always constantly adjust and to see what is best and how you can maximize your potential in any of the moves that you make, right? Yeah. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, you're both very young and still are, 16 and 12. What message do you have to other youths out there to perhaps inspire them and motivate them to maybe, if not start an NGO, at least yeah. to be more aware and more conscious of our current ecosystem in the marine? Okay, so if you're young and you want to participate in any type of conservation, uh, but you feel like you're still lacking the knowledge to start your own initiative, join a credible NGO first. Uh, so there you can learn more, grow as a person, develop new skills and talents. Uh, and maybe uh, as time goes on, you'll um, come up with your own ideas and you can start your own initiative. But if you think that uh, staying in that initiative really works out for you. Stay there and do your best to make it bigger and better. That's a good idea because sometimes it can be very overwhelming, all of this information, oh, yes. and I don't know what to do yeah. with it, yeah. right? Mm. Exactly. Anything to add, perhaps? Yeah, I would say. I would like to ask, actually, <laughs> yeah. like how this uh, initiative has shaped your uh, future academically. I mean, what kind of education you would like to pursue uh, for your yeah, yeah. college? I mean, I think I'll answer this question because he's still really young, but yes, I, I'm applying yes, to colleges yes, yes. like by the end of this year. Okay. At first, I was a really big like finance entrepreneurship ah. person, but I think now that sort of shifted. I'm more of an ecopreneur, right? Okay. And I I, I, I want to pursue something in sustainable development or ESG, environmental social governance and business. So yeah, I think um, there's a really big future in you know being eco-friendly, or I guess go green in business, right? Because, yes. you know, without our planet, we won't be here, so yeah. And I think these days with all the transparency and the fact that we're all more aware and more conscious about this is the fact that more businesses in the future 
we'll have to be more upfront and exactly. clear about everything. Because, yes. you know, we've been hearing about green or eco businesses for a long time, but yes. I think it's only now that the real ones are able to break through. Yes. And thanks to NGOs like yours as well. Good luck with your initiative. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you so Thank much you. for having Best us. Best of luck for your future in the yeah.